Without getting into a lot of technical mumbo jumbo, I'm going to review four cameras that you can use for capturing video for YouTube or whatever you like. I'm going to talk about two camcorders, the Panasonic SD60 and the Canon HF-R700 along with the Sony RX100 and the Sony A5100. If you have a YouTube channel and you're looking to create some videos for it in a cost-effective way, hopefully this video will help you out. There are many videos already out there that are very detailed with regards to the specifications of these cameras that I've mentioned. And there are many, many cameras and options out there to choose from in order to capture video. So these four that I have, I just have them at my disposal, and I find them to be helpful when I've created videos in the past. And I'm going to provide the pros and cons of each, and we're also going to go over some sample videos that each will produce going outside. Uh, and the day that we have right now is kind of rainy and cloudy, and then coming inside. So that way you can see the good and the bad of what these cameras can produce. Now, for many, many years, I used a basic camcorder, uh, which is kind of like this one right here. This is the Panasonic SD60. Um, I've had this for probably 10 years or more. It's been a great camera. And keeping in mind that the purpose behind this type of camera, for me anyway, was just to capture memories. That's all it was. I'm not a professional videographer. I don't go out and create short uh, movies or stories or anything like that. And I respect the people who do. And they are, uh, those that do it really, really understand the art behind creating videos. So more often than not though, I am focused on content, and I think if you create a YouTube channel, you'll want to do the same thing. Now, it's kind of tough to get your content across if your video looks terrible. Now, I don't think that these cameras that we'll go over, I don't know that I would say they look terrible. It's just some will be better than others. So with all that said, let's just jump in. I'm going to talk just briefly about each camera, and then we'll go over some uh, sample videos, and we'll see what we can do with them. So with this Panasonic right here, um, it has the flip out screen and this is a touch sensor. Most of them have this and this is pretty basic, pretty standard for the camcorders that you have today. Now the technology has advanced quite a bit and uh, you know you could probably find these used and most of them like this for a couple hundred dollars. So um, from the cost point to get into creating some videos, I don't think this is a bad option. Um, something I want to keep in mind, again without getting into a lot of technical detail, is that the sensor size on here is uh, relatively small. Um, the only thing that's going to have a smaller sensor than your camcorder will most likely be your smartphone. So what does sensor size do? Well, sensor size allows for uh, better quality video in low light and it also provides for a better depth of focus. So depth of focus is, um, you know, I'm using a fixed 50 millimeter lens on my Nikon D7000 to shoot this video right now. My f-stop is around a 2.0. What does all that mean? If you're non-technical, don't worry a lot about it. Just know this, that if I am back this way, my hands should be blurry back here, I believe. And if I'm up forward, they're blurry. Um, the focal point is about this right here. And so hopefully I'm in focus with my face, all right? Um, but it helps to draw uh, attention to the subject matter and that's what that depth of focus is all about. With a camcorder, you're really not going to get that um, because the sensor size is so small, uh, they're just not equipped to do that. So, um, again, this is the Panasonic and old school camera. Uh, it, it's incredibly, and I'll talk about the Canon here in a minute, but there's no interchangeable lens. So when you're out and about, you just flip this thing open and start recording. Uh, the autofocus is all built in. There are some manual overrides to these cameras. Um, however, um, I don't know if they're that fantastic. Maybe the higher end ones are, but these lower end ones, nothing to write home about. So um, let's go ahead and talk just real quick about the Canon. So this is the uh, HF-R700. Now this is much newer than the Panasonic. Um, and again, flip open screen. Uh, it's kind of funny to think about that. 10 years ago they had it and here we are still with it. Um, this though is much, much better with the sensitivity on the screen. I mean, it almost mirrors that of, of a camera phone or a, a smartphone in my opinion. So yeah, you can see the battery on there, that thing looks big, right? I can hold it by that. But um, 
you know, the battery's fine. And again, this is a very quick way to just pull out something that is dedicated to capturing video and to get what you want it to. And with that screen coming out, you know, they flip around so you can self-compose with it, makes it nice. Sensor size is gonna be the same in this as it is in the Panasonic. So again, you're still gonna have challenges with the uh, low light conditions and depth of field. This does have a portrait mode on it. Uh, the portrait mode is meant to keep the, um, the subject in focus and blur the background. Although in my testing, I really haven't had much success with that. But again, we'll shoot some sample video and uh, you guys can decide for yourself. So um, let's talk real quick about the uh, Sony uh, RX100. Now keeping in mind that the Canon that we just talked about, uh, the price point on that I think is around uh, $250, 300 tops on that. So um, this right here, the RX100, uh, this I wanna say is around 600 right now. This is the first generation. I believe they have four of them out uh, as of today. And the third and fourth one that have come out, uh, the screen does flip all the way forward, which is great for self-composition. This one articulates uh, up and down, but it does not flip all the way around. Now, if you've subscribed to my channels and you've seen some of my other videos, you'll know that I also have a A6000. And I created a hack for that with a little mirror and some wire. And it works great um, to create self-composition. Um, you know, it's a little kludgy at times, but it does do the trick. Um, so nonetheless, this camera right here does some great quality. Uh, and staying with the theme of sensors, this has a one inch sensor. So this is considerably bigger than the sensors you'll find in the camcorder, which again means I'm gonna have better low light performance with this and a better chance for depth of field. This is a non-interchangeable lens, so the lens is fixed on here, um, which is fine. I mean, you know, again, if you can kind of see the size of it, it's small, and that makes it kind of nice. Um, the one challenge I've had with this when I've tried the video, outside of the fact that it doesn't have the articulating screen to the front, front is that if I set up a shot with this and I compose it and I, I zoom in on it, um, if I let it sit for too long, it'll auto shut off, and I think I could probably turn that off in the menu. But if it shuts off for any reason, I go to power it back up, it defaults to a wide angle zoom. So that means I've got to recompose and kind of go back through the process again. But the quality of this camera is great. And again, we're going to do some sample video. I'll show it to you. So last but not least is the Sony A5100. Now, uh, Sony has come out with the uh, 6000 and the 6300. Um, the thing I really like about this camera, though, is that the screen articulates to the front, so it flips up. And when you want to do self-composition, that's very, very helpful to do that. So um, this camera right here, the other thing to mention is that the sensor size in this camera, as we've been talking about, this is the largest sensor size of all the cameras that we're talking about. Um, this rivals the typical crop sensor in a DSLR, very similar to the Nikon D7000 that I'm shooting with right now. Uh, price point on this camera is, I wanna say it's around $550. Uh, you might be able to find open box or refurbs in the 400. Um, this is a kit lens. So this, this lens does change, this is an interchangeable lens. This is a 16 to 50 millimeter which gives you, um, it gives you some zoom power in there. Uh, this is a power zoom lens, so I'm not a big fan of that personally, but um, it's a good quality lens for the camera body. And again, we'll shoot some video of this and we'll see what all these look like. And then uh, we'll recap and go from there. It's raining pretty hard outside and I've waited for a while uh, for that rain to stop, but it doesn't look like it's gonna happen anytime soon. So I'm using the Panasonic SD60 right now and I'm at a local park and I'm by a shelter. Now this shelter measures 40 foot square or so and there's a big overhang. So I'm just gonna walk around the shelter and I'm gonna do this with each camera. And I'm also, um, I've got this camera on top of a, um, a tripod that, that I'm just holding in my hand. So this will also test for the image stabilization and you should be able to see uh, kind of how the lighting works and also I do not have an external microphone, uh, which means the, um, you know, the audio is gonna be recorded entirely by the camera itself. So 
Um, seems like the rain's starting to lighten up just a little bit, but it is definitely wet. And we could use the rain, so no major complaints. Again, this is the Panasonic SD60, and I'm rounding turn number four right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch out, and uh, we'll jump in on another camera. Uh, next, we're gonna go with the Canon. I've got the Canon R700 on the tripod now, and this is set to the uh, portrait mode. Now, what the portrait mode should do from Canon is to keep the subject, again, me, in this case, in focus, and it should help to blur the background. Uh, again, I don't know how well that really works, but, um, you know, it seems nice in theory anyway. So, the rain continues to fall, um, but it's only been a minute or two, so I don't think it's going to stop anytime soon. Again, no external mic, so the audio is being recorded uh, completely on the camera. And um, I'm just about done making this turn, so it's 40 feet by 40 feet, and that's just a guess. So let's go ahead and jump on the, um, we'll move to the uh, Sony RX100 next. I'm using the Sony RX100 now. And as I start to walk around this shelter, keep in mind that I don't have um, a flip-up monitor, so I can't tell if I'm really composed in the center or off to the side. It's kind of a gamble, but I'm looking in the center, so I'm thinking I'm center. Um, again, I'm using the onboard microphone. And um, one other notable, as I mentioned before, this is a one-inch sensor. And I also have the ability to go down to 24 frames a second with this Sony, which I really like. Um, it's kind of personal preference as to your frame rate but 24 is kind of what's standard with your traditional movies and film. Um, so I just kind of like that. But um, a lot of people will use 30 and some use 60. I do like 60 for slow motion and uh, maybe really fast action, things like that. So um, this camera though, the quality behind it should be better. Um, again, I really can't see how I'm composed on it, but uh, we'll see how it turns out. So. Next up will be the Sony A5100. I'm shooting with the Sony A5100 right now. And as I start to walk around this shelter, um, again, we're shooting with the built-in microphone. And this does have the flip-up screen, so it makes it very nice for me to self-compose. If I want to go center, I want to go this side or this side, I can easily do that. Um, one notable, again, is that this has the largest sensor of the group. So the image quality should be a little better on this. And I am zoomed not all the way out with this um, uh, with this kit lens. Um, as I mentioned, it goes from 16 to 50 millimeters, so I'm probably around 20 right now. Um, I wanted to try to match the zoom of the other lenses, and keeping in mind with the Sony, I was zoomed out as wide as I could. So I can't really see just how composed I was with that Sony. Um, but my guess is that, you know, I was somewhere in the middle. So um, this particular camera though should produce um, uh, the better quality of the bunch I believe in my opinion and we'll see how it does. So um, we're done with this test of walking around this shelter and I think what I'm going to do is I will move inside and see if we can get some kind of lower light situations and we'll see what type of quality we get from these cameras. I'm inside and I'm shooting with the Panasonic SD60. What I do have is a window that's about five feet from me and I did close the blinds to that window and I just turned the lamp on, uh, nothing special lamp. But this is kind of what you might be facing um, lighting wise when you're inside. Now the lights that I have, they're not daylight so I'm kind of curious to see what this camera does with the uh, white balance and I'm okay with the fact that this is a very old uh, kind of cheapo camcorder and it's really about the noise and the grain uh, as the light gets darker. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually shut the light off so there'll be just very little light in here and we'll see uh, how this camera deals with it. I turned the light off and I had to crack the blinds just a little bit because it was so dark that the camera I don't think was picking me up at all. So on the monitor I can see that it at least has me and we'll see just what kind of noise we have. But it is time to move on to the Canon camcorder which I'm going to do right now. 
I'm shooting with the Canon R700 right now inside and I have the blinds closed uh, again the windows probably five feet from me and I just have a little desk lamp turned on so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna shut the lamp off and I'm gonna open the blinds just a little bit and we'll see how this camera does uh, in a really low light situation again I'm with the Canon R700 and I've turned the lamp light off and cracked open the blinds just a little bit so uh, we'll see how this camera does it's very um, it, it's not pitch black in here but it's it's pretty dark I mean it's dark to the point that you would probably want to turn turn a lamp on so you can see again shooting with the Sony RX100 I'm not able to self compose or see a monitor so I'm really just kind of guessing that I'm in front of the lens so um, I'm thinking I'm centered and um, again we just have a lamp on with the blinds closed I'm gonna go ahead and shut the lamp off and then I'm gonna open the blinds just a bit and we'll see how the Sony does it's actually so dark in here that I really can't see the glass on the lens uh, I can see the camera but that's about it so I have no idea if the Sony is really picking me up or not but We'll find out in a few, and um, next up will be the Sony A5100. Shooting with the Sony A5100, uh, again with the light on and the blinds closed. It does have the flip-up monitor, so I can see that I am uh, composed in the center, to the side, to the side. And again, this is the largest sensor, so I would expect this to do a little better in low-light situations. I'm going to go ahead and turn the uh, lamp off and we're going to open the blinds a bit and we'll record again. The lamp is now turned off and the blinds are cracked slightly and it looks like it's definitely taking in more light. Now on this camera the uh, ISO is set to auto and I believe I have a maximum of 6400 uh, dialed into this, um, to this camera. So. The next thing we're going to do is I'm going to go down to the uh, studio where I started this project and with that lighting that we have I'm going to do one more test and we'll set each one of these cameras up again and we'll do some more sample video. I'm shooting with the Panasonic SD60 now and uh, around me I have the same lighting conditions that I started this project with and uh, just to my front is my tripod with the Nikon D7000 on it so uh, the lighting um, really seems to be helping the camcorder uh, produce a decent video one thing that's notable though is look behind me and there really is no blur um, or not much of a blur uh, you can see just about everything behind me and compare that with the uh, Nikon D7000 and the fixed uh, 50 millimeter I have on it so um, I'm going to go ahead and move on to the Canon camcorder and we'll see how it performs. I'm shooting with the Canon R700 under the same lighting conditions as I just shot with the Panasonic and the uh, project camera which is the Nikon. Um, it's interesting as um, we'll see how it looks but it seems that the colors are a bit washed out and you can see behind me even with the portrait mode that um, items still appear to be in focus. I am on uh, just wide angle and it's an odd feeling with the Canon and I'm sure there's someone out there who's got some technical reasons but it almost seems as if it's backwards slightly so depending on how I tilt this um, but nonetheless um, so we'll see how this Canon uh, behaves and we'll move on to the next camera which will be the Sony RX100 Again, shooting with the Sony RX100, I have no idea how I am composed in this uh, in this shot, but I am in front of the lens, so hopefully I'm centered up. Um, we'll have to see how the uh, how the lighting looks with this particular camera. And knowing it's got the one-inch sensor, I suspect that the quality would be a little better than the camcorders. So next up will be the Sony A5100. I'm shooting with the Sony A5100 and again I zoomed in just a little bit um, because at its full wide angle um, it's taking in a lot of the a lot of the background here um, ISO is auto and uh, the only thing I've done here is set it to 24 frames 
uh, which I did uh, with, the, with the Sony RX100 and um, I, the f-stop might be auto I think I'm on shutter priority here so um, nonetheless uh, hopefully this uh, this will give you some good examples of what these cameras uh, can do under different lighting conditions. I hope you found this video useful. I had a lot of fun making it and it really helped me to see the differences in quality between the different cameras. Now if you want my opinion on what I would do uh, choosing amongst these four, um, I think after looking at the video you will come to the same conclusion that the Sony a5100 is uh, dominant in the video quality of the uh, unscientific testing that we just did. Um, I do think that a close runner-up is the Sony RX100. However, um, without being able to um, compose the shot, you know, it, it just makes it very difficult if you're doing any kind of vlogging or self-composition. Um, again, you know, maybe you I'll come out with a hack for this as well, which again is just the mirror and some wires, but it's more difficult on this to try and hook it to the sides, so we'd have to play with this one a little bit. Again, this is a one inch sensor versus the uh, larger sensor right here in the Sony A5100. Um, and the only concern with this camera is the overheating situation. And if you do some research on it, you will find that there are other people that have had uh, trouble with this camera overheating. Now, if you take short clips, I think you'll be fine with this camera. Uh, more often than not, I am a short clip kind of person. I don't really put a camera up and let it run for 20 or 30 minutes and go back and do a lot of edits. I usually get in and I might record three or four minutes, then stop and another three or four and stop. So it just kind of depends on your recording style. If you, if you plan to do some short clips, lots of short clips, put them together at the end, then again, I think this uh, Sony A5100 is a great uh, choice for you. Now, I don't think they're making this anymore or they're starting to discontinue it, um, but it's a great camera, so um, if it's still out there and you have the opportunity to get it, I would. With regards to the camcorders, um, again, I've been using the uh, Panasonic, this one right here, for many, many years. And in family videos, it's fine. It captures the moment, and ultimately, that's what you're shooting for. It's not really meant to be uh, put out for criticism on YouTube. And again, the number one thing about YouTube and whatever video you put out for consumption to the general public should be filled full of content, should be useful. And I think the more useful it is, the more people can oversee the quality of the video itself. So it's just something to think about, and I hope this helped you out. Um, you know, as, as, as I look at this, uh, don't, don't uh, let yourself become overwhelmed by all the different choices that are out there. First and foremost is take what you have at your disposal and use it to your advantage. Maybe it's just a phone that you have. And if you have just a phone but you have something to say or something to record, something you want to put out, use that phone. And the smaller the sensor, and keeping in mind that some of the smallest sensors out there are in the phones today, just ensure you have some really good lighting. And when I say really good lighting, that doesn't mean expensive lighting. Some of the lighting that I have, and maybe I'll do another video on that, is nothing special. I got this on the cheap, and you know, I'll detail another video on, on how, to, uh, how to find it, and how to make it, and how to, how to work that to your advantage. So, if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so, it's called The Real World. And you never know what you might get. More often than not, I will create videos about photography and videography. Um, but again, I may do them about homeownership or maintenance of automobiles and things of that nature. So until the next video, take care of yourself and be safe.